The markets are under pressure. The Dow right now is down 700. I'm doing this around 11.15. Uh, we are seeing some technology stocks doing well, but Europe now is taking center stage because they're talking recession. I don't know if you've seen the euro because it's close to par with the dollar. I think it's something like a 20-year low, whatever it is. And yes, we're talking about that dollar, right? It's supposed to lose its reserve currency status. These are some experts are predicting since 1975, every single year, get out of US, you gotta put your money, get the hell out of it. Everybody goes to the dollar when shit like this happens. It's the safest thing in the world. You might hate the dollar, but it's a billion times better than every single currency out there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, saying that Bitcoin isn't a currency, but even Bitcoin, with all this nonsense, with so many different places folding shops and saying that, we're well, halting withdrawals. I can't tell you how many platforms there are that trade cryptos that are halting withdrawals right now, which is really scary. So people are just taking their money off of these platforms, even the good ones, and it's resulting in more and more. So, you know, again, that's going to result in weakness for a little while until it ends. But we've seen this before in Bitcoin down 70% three other times before breaking into new highs. But let's see. I mean, I know institutional money can now go into this thing, but man, it's it's been crazy even not just in our market and Europe and globally, which every asset class is basically down, every one, but even in Bitcoin, things like that. Like I said last week, most economies are going to fall into recession. And we're talking about it like it's the end of the world, right? You can't, you can't, it's exactly what the Fed is trying to do. They can't say it publicly, right? But when you're raising rates aggressively, shrinking your balance sheet, it reduces the money in the system, promotes less spending, fewer loans. So to say we're not going to go into recession, it's basically denial and it's political, right? You don't want, as an acting president or Fed chief, you never want to have a recession under your watch, under that belt. Which explains why everywhere we look, there's so much, we're not going into a recession talk. Or we're going to avoid a recession, right? That That's, you see it everywhere. We're probably going to avoid it. I mean, does it really matter? I mean, ignore it. It's just a word. It was a normal course of business before the credit crisis, where every four to five years we fell into recession, which is normal. It wasn't the end of the world. 15, 20%, 22% decline, and everything readjusts. You get the shit out of the market. Then you move to new highs, more innovation and stuff like that. I mean, it was normal, but we didn't allow that for such a long time. It kept interest rates low for such a long time. Now you're seeing the money pour out of the market, come out of the market, especially since COVID, where trillions was injected. But when we officially go into recession, which could be right now, which could be right now. And I mentioned this on Twitter, how there's good data sites out there that, that are saying that we're going to see a negative GDP print, which would be two in a row, which is surprising. I think it was 2%, fell to 1%. I think the consensus is still for around 1%, 0.8%, but these guys try to do it in real time, and they're pretty accurate, not accurate all the time. But again, it's I, I covered this last week showing that uh, and I don't know if I did for Frankly Speaking or actually in a segment, but it gets revised, right? You get revisions... And a lot of this data, and you get three different revisions, right? Because it's based on it's quarterly data, GDP, unemployment's monthly, but your know, GDP is quarterly, and then it gets revised three different times. And last month was revised from one point six uh, to one point five, right? So uh, negative. So if you're looking at this quarter being negative as well, you got to be careful because that's the definition. And when we see the definition, or we actually say it out loud, I think it's going to be the ultimate bottom, and we're pretty close. So I'm still buying stocks here. People are like, Frank, I'm worried. And I get it. I get it. I know the next three months are going to be horrific. But it's going to be horrific from a headline standpoint. Many countries are going to announce it. Going into recession. They talk a great deal about it. You're going to see defaults. You're going to see another big rate hike later this month. 75 basis points likely, most likely. Taking the Fed funds rate up to 2.5%. We're going to see earnings warnings. These companies are going to start reporting in about two weeks, but about three weeks and four weeks is when we really get into it. But it's going to get ugly, especially from a headline standpoint. With that said, take a step back and look what's going on. The S&P 500 is already down 20%. The Nasdaq's down, what, close to 30%? Look at the Russell 2000 small caps trading at its cheapest level in over 20 years. I can't go back further than that. You can, but it, it just gets, you know, again, 20 years compared to now. But you have banks raising their dividends and increasing buybacks, which is a very good sign that we don't have structural problems like we did in the credit crisis, which you didn't know what the damage was, or banks be able to lend, they had to sharp their balance sheets, get bailed out. It's not like that now. 
Most importantly, if you look at the Fed, tightening, raising rates, doing everything you can to slow inflation because it relates to the party. I'm not going to pick up the Fed again. It's working. It's working. And they're not mentioning a lot of that in the media. They're just talking about the negatives and everything. You go on Twitter, you go on your favorite social media platform, it's like, get the hell out, we're dead, it's over. The you got to look at the big picture here. The Fed's doing everything it can to control inflation, and it's working. Have you seen copper prices? I mean, they're getting smashed. 17 months old, they're below 350 now. Look at Freeport. Freeport's down another 7%. All these, a lot of these stocks getting crushed. Look at lumber prices. Now down 70% from their highs. Mortgage demand falling off a cliff with rates surging. If you want to borrow money, it's much, much more difficult. It was difficult before that. Oil prices closing at $100, down 30% from their highs. 100 expensive, yes, but they're down. That's what we need to see. And look at the gas pump. The gas pump in Florida, prices are down about 15% a gallon in the past, what, couple days, few days? I was surprised to see where it is. It's in 430 prints when it was four. I didn't see five. I saw 499 a couple of times. It was basically above 485 for a while. And for us, it's close to $15, $20 savings for our SUV, which we fill up twice a week because all the driving we do. It's why we're moving to Jacksonville for our kids. So $4 in savings a week, $160 a month. It adds up. It adds up for everybody out there. And of course, we need price to come down a lot more. But my point here is that we're seeing signs of prices not just moderating, which we wanted to see, and it didn't really show up in last month's results. In last month's results. And remember, that's a month lag. And that's why the market took another leg down. But they're not just moderating. They're starting to fall sharply from their highs. Retail is sitting on 35, what is it, 35% inventories? Which is insane. And what are you going to do when you have that much inventory? You have to sell low prices. Well, the market's down. Interesting enough, Ark Innovations is up today, which owns what? Datadog, you know, Roblox. You've seen Amazon, even Meta up, Netflix. But a lot of encouraging signs since what? We hear all the negatives every single day for the past four months. I'm not sugarcoating things. I'm not telling you things are fantastic. I'm not telling you things are going to be fantastic from here at the bottom. You got to buy go crazy. No. I said I'm not buying stocks here. Because the negatives that we hear, lower lows for the major indices, we're in supply chain concerns, rates surging, middle America hurting, Russia, Ukraine war causing higher energy prices. We hear that. We keep hearing that every month, week over week, almost daily, for the past four months, five months. Again, a lot of it's being priced in with the markets down so much. But if you look at certain things, like some of the things I mentioned with prices coming down, I mean, look at the 10 year. The 10 year is at 2.8%. It's important, guys. Watch the 10 year. It's very, very important. I mean, was it 3.3% recently? I thought it was like last week. So it's down to 2.8%. That signifies that future interest rate hikes are being priced in. The Fed, may pause sooner than expected. That's what that says at 2.8%. And that's huge. Remember, gas prices going from $5 to $4.30. I mean, it's not a game changer. It's not massive since gas prices were, what, $3 a year ago. I get it. And that's an argument you're hearing now. Well, inflation is moderated. It's coming down. But still, it's crazy. Look, at, I mean, it might fall year over year because it's up so high. But still, you're going to be paying four fifty for gas for $5. And it was three. I get it. I understand that. And you're right in saying that. However, I'm talking about the markets here. And it's something I know because I've been doing this for a long time because I made millions of mistakes. But the more we see the economy pulling back, right, the more we see prices fall, especially with commodities, which we're seeing, the less aggressive the Fed will be in terms of tightening. And if the Fed even hints, if they hint at slowing the pace of rate hikes, which we're going to get the Fed minutes tomorrow, and they're going to talk about inflation, how crazy it is again. That's what they want to do. But going to next month, it's going to be interesting. Because what are they going to do? They're probably going to raise by, say, five basis points, bring it up to 2.5%. I have a feeling either then they're going to say, hey, we're going to look out and watch and see what's going on. By the way, what's pricing in right now is a 50 basis hike this month. I believe it's going to be 75 basis point hike. And what's also being priced into the markets right now is we're going to be cutting rates next year. Think about that. I and mean, if we're cutting rates 
It's a much better environment, and that's a year from now, and we're seeing stocks down tremendously. Again, it can go down further. But the Fed even hints at slowing the pace of rate hikes, which they could do in September. The markets are going to surge from these levels. That's how the press says. Especially great names are down 30%, only because they're in an industry that's seeing aggressive selling and outflows due to leveraging and everybody covering. There's a lot of great names that shouldn't be trading at these levels.